Hello you guys, Sandal 6 Gaming and we're on video today and today I'm starting the Ultimate Command Block Tutorial 3.0 but this time it's not going to be a single video, it's going to be a, a series um, these are all the parts so if you can count there's 8 of them so there will be 8 episodes of this series sorry about that um, so let's just get started now there's something I did not explain quite as well in my last tutorial and that is how to actually get a command block well I explained it but the command was in a command block which is kind of ironic so what you just do is you do give then tap completion for your name or just yeah just slash give tap completion for your name or just type out your name if you want to and then it is minecraft I use a lot of tab completion if you press tab it will sometimes complete things for you uh, so that you don't have to type it out so if I just do command and I just press tab it's that command slash give sentinel 6 and then there goes your name minecraft command block and I do that and I get a command block because the command block is a very cool block you can do great stuff with it but it is nowhere to be seen in here if we search command block it's not there so yeah so this is the first part this is going to be the general commands the commands that most of the time have one use or a few uses but just aren't worth uh, an entire video so I'll just explain them and you'll get the basics and then the harder commands or the commands that have a lot of options will be covered in separate videos. So to start in a command block you can, let's just get the command block back here, you can specify what you want to target with the command. So do you want to target the nearest person to the command block, which is me because I'm the only one in the world, a random person or everyone or an entity. You can use specifiers, but that will come up in a later video. Um, so yeah, these are the four uh, specifiers you can use to target people. So this is a command. So if I just put myself in survival, this is just, uh, we're starting really easy, slash game mode. And it basically just puts me to survival. It targets the nearest player, which is me. You can set it to add A, which would target everyone it would put everyone in the server in creative or if you pu put another number there in another game mode uh, you can do add R which would put a random person in creative or add E add E basically with this command doesn't really have much use because it also targets entities but entities can't enter creative mode only players can so really no use for add E in this instance um, so yeah zero is for survival one is for creative two is for adventure mode and three is for spectator mode uh, so yeah you can just do all, either one of those so let's just if I just put a three here I'm now in spectator mode so Let's get back to creative. Then the next one, difficulty. Uh, this is difficulty zero, so this is gonna set it to peaceful. And then one is easy, two is normal, and three is hard. And pretty self-explanatory, it basically just sets the difficulty of the game. Um, then next is default game mode. Um, this one is most useful for when you set up land worlds or servers and uh, this will basically set the default game mode to zero so that if people join my land world the default game mode is survival is zero so yeah pretty self-explanatory as well then we've got toggle downfall this time I'm not in the desert so it will actually work so it will toggle the downfall which basically means that it should start raining but it might not I didn't it is plains biome so it should start raining but it's not for some reason yeah, it is a plains biome. Plains biomes do have rain, but for some reason it's not happening. Um, yeah, there's no problem there, so I don't know why it's working once again. <laughs> why it's not working. So, I don't know if I'm being stupid again or if it really just is being weird. I guess it might count this flat world as a desert, I don't know. Because it does not rain in desert, so Toggle Downfall has no use there. Um, time set. So this basically lets you, allows you to set the time of the day. Zero is basically beginning of the day and 13,000 is night time. So this will just set it to zero. 
and always uh, so that it is daytime. time and if we just set it to 500 you can see the sun moves up and if we set it to 5000 you can see the sun's now all the way up there and 13,000 and it is going down right there and if it was on easy or any anything above that mobs would start spawning just right about now uh, next is the weather command it's basically a way to specify what kind of weather you want you can do clear rain or thunder so this is just gonna set the weather to clear for a million seconds <laughs> um, this is really useful because a lot of people just do toggle downfall if you really don't like the rain use this this command it will keep the rain away for a long time if you want thunder you can also do that with this command so that you can turn on the thunder or anything like that if you want that kind of ambient feel for a custom map or whatever next is slash spawn point i press this and now this block is my spawn point so that if i do slash kill I respawn right here so yeah let me just get my command block back and the next is set world spawn mm, the set world spawn command basically what it does it doesn't just set the spawn for me it sets the spawn for the entire world and it sets it in a area not a specific block so it's basically your normal spawn that you get when you spawn in you change that instead of your normal spawn point there are two separate things so you can set the world spawn so that if someone doesn't have a spawn point or a bed they spawn at the world spawn and uh, next is slash teleport and this is just gonna teleport me back to right here where i set my spawn point so yeah you can use coordinates to teleport Whoops, sorry uh, you can teleport someone to someone else so i could tp, uh, TP at p to at r teleport them to a random person or teleport them to the to a mob using at e uh, so yeah that's pretty great next we've got slash xp uh, this is gonna give me basically a thousand levels you won't see it unless i go into survival so i've got one level now i've got a ten thousand and one levels now so this just gives me thousand levels you can also take away the l and it will now just give me thousand xp should have stayed in the survival maybe so yeah it xp doesn't really do much especially not when you have that many levels and now if we do this we put the bell l back again and we put a minus there i go to survival again and we click the button i only have one level because it took them all away so yeah next is slash clear um now for this uh to demonstrate you can just do slash clear at p or slash clear at a and we'll just clear the inventory of that sp person you're targeting um so i'm just gonna get a fish here and i've got it set so that it only removes fish so it cleared fish from my inventory if i get a stack it will say hmm not clear why not oh i've got cooked fish sorry and now it's cleared 64 items from my inventory so yeah pretty great for this next one i am gonna need to adjust some settings because i normally don't uh, record minecraft sound but for this one i'm gonna have to all right i'm back i just had to adjust some settings um so this is the slash play sound command uh all commands will be in the description i should have mentioned that at the beginning so you can check them all out in the description um this is just basically play sound and then the name of the sound and the names of the sound are basically named to what folder they're in but i'll just uh, put a link to someone on the minecraft forums i think it was we will post an entire list of all the names of the play sounds and this is playing it to everyone and it's a pig yeah, you can mess around with that, play it to several people and all that stuff. And uh, you can also add custom sounds and all that stuff. But that is a whole another tutorial that doesn't even have that much to do with command blocks. So that also won't be in this series. Uh, next is slash give. Slash give is... It can be used really basic. It can get really complicated. And that's why there will be another separate part on slash give. Be a giving the more complicated side of things uh, and this will basically just give me a diamond sword 
pretty straightforward. Give at P diamond sword. You can also do give at A diamond sword. You get the specifier thing by now, I hope. Um, next one is slash effect. And this is going to basically just going to give me jump boost. And how that works is just effect at P the ID of the potion effect, which will also be, uh, I'll also link a list of potion effect IDs in the description. Uh, then the uh, duration and then the amount of jump boost. So if I press, the, uh, press this, you can see it's 10 seconds, which is the 10. So duration seconds and then five jump boost five. So pretty much a lot of jump boost. You can do really high jump boost. I could go jump boost 20. And as you can see, I go really high. So this one's really fun to mess around with. And next we've got slash summon, another one that will have a separate video in this series. Um, uh, because it can get really complicated and you can do some really cool stuff with it but this is the basic one summon the mob you want to summon and then the coordinates so this is the tilde notation which is basically um, tilde 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 stands for exactly at these coordinates of this command block now this stands for summoning it to a blocks above the command block which is right here uh, so yeah that's pretty great if uh, you want to know how to know which mobs you can summon you can just type slash summon right here and tap complete completion and you get all the entities you can summon i just summoned a moose room <laughs> damn it and uh, so yeah next one is set block this basically allows you to set a block to whatever you want uh, this is gonna set the block under here to diamond which is pretty cool and well basically the way you do it is set block again with the tail days um these are the co coordinates so this is one block below the command block as uh, diamond block so the block you want if you want to know what the block ids are you can do f f3h um i just turned it off because i already had it on but just want to demonstrate and you can see all the ids so this is minecraft sponge minecraft planks minecraft glass all that stuff Next is set block spawner. Now this is a really uh, pretty cool thing with set block. Um, I didn't want to go too deep in any commands in this video, but I'm gonna do this one. Um, this is basically set block mop underscore spawner zero replace. So this is uh, something we didn't use in the last one, um, but it's actually this is basically saying that it's gonna replace the block that's below it. You could also say that it doesn't place it unless there's uh, just air, empty space there, or you could say that it destroys the other block, which creates a lot of particle effects that you don't want. So yeah, and the zero is better for the mob spawner. And then we've got entity ID pig. So you can just get a spawner for whatever you want. Uh, we could also say right here, blaze. And now we've got a blaze spawner. So this is how you get mob spawners with command blocks. Really cool to, to, uh, stuff. Sorry if I am a bit stuttery at sometimes. I am not English. <laughs> For all the people not subscribed to my channel watching. Um, the slash enchant command. Now for this I am going to get a sword. Because otherwise it won't work. The slash enchant, enchant command only works when they've got an item in their inventory. So there you go. Gives me sharpness 5. Uh, basically how you do this is enchant at p and then or at a or whatever you want and then the enchantment id which is again a list i'll link below the enchantment ids 16 is sharpness and then level 5 the thing with uh, slash enchant is that it doesn't go above the original level so it doesn't go above sharpness 5 which slash give in the part that will come later i'll show you how to get sharpness 16,000 on a sword or something so yeah Next one is slash say, and it's just gonna say hello, and then my Minecraft username. And how I did that is say hello at A. So if there were more people in this world, uh, it will list off all the people in, in this world and say hello to them at the same time, of course, because at A, uh, or you could just do at R or at P or at E. You could do at E, but that's gonna be a long message. Oh no, there's not too many entities actually. So it says hello, Sandal 6, pig, moose room, toast, toast, item.item.string, and item.item.string. Yeah. So there's two string ring laying around here, and there's two things called toast. <laughs> yep. Um, next is tell. This is just gonna say hello, but this is a message that only I can read. It doesn't appear in public chat with slash tell. You can send private messages to someone. 
Um, this is basically mostly useful on servers, basically only useful on servers, but it is also useful in single player. Um, so that's why I did here, because the second part is going to be server commands. Uh, next we've got slash title, add 1.8, really useful. It can make a title appear on your screen with a color. Uh, the way you use it is title at A, and then title, and then you can put the text here between curly brackets. These brackets are going to be coming back a lot in just about every command. They are just something that are used a lot in command blocks, the brackets and all these signs. So it says welcome and then color blue. So this you can just change the color here. Let's say red. Press it again and it says welcome in red. All right, next is the slash achievement command. Uh, this basically just a way to cheat your way into getting achievements. So if I press this, I get the achievement adventuring time. And basically how it works is achievement, give, and then the achievement name you want at P. Once again, if you want to know all the achievement names, you can just go achievement, give, and then tap complete. It will give you all of them. And there's a lot because it isn't just all the achievements. It's also stats like um, uh, fall one kilometer, I think that is. Or is it centimeter? I don't know. So yeah, it just also allows you to change the stats right here. So if I go to the, my distance fallen, I've set it to one centimeter. I added that right there. And yeah, so also if you go to uh, my achievements, um, I now have adventuring time without even having unlocked it in this world. So that's how that works. You can also, um, you can also take them away. So let's just use step complete right here. And you can just see it's just take the way uh, the reason I show, uh, show all this because tab completion will sh just save you a lot of time. It's really useful. Uh, next is the block data command. Block data basically allows you to change the MBT tags and block data of a block. So this is changing the data of the block above here to put some items in it. So it will say items ID 264 count 64. And then with all the brackets and all that stuff, um, that's the command. And now it has 64 diamonds in them. The brackets are important because they separate certain types of things from each other in the commands. Uh, next is entity data, which is basically the same, but it's for entities. Now this one I've got set up to, um, to target a pig. So this is at E and this one of the specifiers that I will use more explain better and more in another video uh, the another part and this is just gonna give a random pit all the pigs actually in the world uh, the name mr. Piggles because so I've got a lot of pigs here none of them have names as you see and now they're all called mr. Piggles so yeah that's just a really stupid example of what you can do with NT data but you can go do some pretty cool stuff and uh, next is execute which basically allows you to execute a command at a player or an entity. So as you can see, it says execute at P till days, which is basically meaning at that exact position of that person. And then it just says set block one block below the person here, because if I did that here as well, it would do two blocks below me and that wouldn't have any use. And it's going to set here a set a golden block. And now nothing there. Click. And now it's there and it doesn't matter where I stand this isn't like set block it's using it doing it relative to me so you could basically have someone walking around turning every block below them into gold with this command but you would have to set it up on a clock um, next is the slash fill command slash fill uses two sets of command blocks the um, one of the corners and the other corner so basically one of the corners on the downside of a cube basically because most of the times you do a cube or a flat surface like the left bottom corner and the right upper corner and then you, you it connects those two corners and makes a cube or a flat uh, space out of it and fills it with that block so I've got two commands set here and it will just basically fill this with gold blocks so uh, basically the commands uh, I mean the commands the coordinates I took uh, I might have 
want to explain this earlier so basically you just press f3 and you see, can see your coordinates i'm guessing a lot of you might know that already so yeah and then i just took this corner and this corner and it did its thing now i can also say that i changed the y by a bit and now i created an, an entire golden cube pretty cool stuff it's in the way so let me just break it down really quick all right next kill you might know kill because kill basically what it does is it kills you it's basically a suicide command but not anymore because this can kill all pigs there go miss there goes mr pickles all of them they're all dead now and uh, so yeah you can specify what you want to kill so <laughs> it killed mr pickles yep you did uh, next is the slash particle command so this is basically gonna display particles above here so this is gonna be particle lava which is the name of the particle once again if you want to know all the particles you can use just tap complete and you'll get all of them they also have the sync syntax so the next is the coordinates where you want to do the particles then how big you want them to be which is basically just the radius of how where you want them then the speed you want them at and then the amount of particles you want so i've got 50 particles within a radius of one block basically this says and a speed of one so well radius of one blocks means that basically it's five blocks because it forms a little star so yeah there's just some lava particles for you you can chase this to well let's do a huge explosion and this is actually the name for it so as you can see pretty huge explosion so yeah that's pretty cool next is the replace item block replace item you can use it for blocks and entities and basically allows you to replace items in a blocks or a person's inventory so this is gonna put gold block in container 8 so this replace item block coordinates and then slot dot container dot 8 gold block press that and well basically it would have put it <laughs> in this slot but because it is getting powered by the button it just immediately spoofs it out so yeah but it does work it's pretty cool because as you can see it's empty now but it still spits it out so that's pretty cool stuff um basically if you want to know this you're gonna need to um, look it up or something because i don't think you can get that with tab completion as you can see replace item and the block well it will just use the coordinates i am at right now oh wait it actually does do that so you can just look for the right slots you've got container you've got enter ender chest and you've got um, inventory next is replace item entity uh again same command basically except that there's entity here and you have to use a slot dot hold bar slot dot inventory uh, so there goes my command block because it's gold now it changed it it replaced it with a gold block you can also use these to equip players with armor or weapons or zombies or any other skeleton mobs with armor you can't equip players with zombies you can equip zombies with armor and all that stuff so that's pretty cool next is a command for when you are doing a mini game or something and you want uh, players randomly spread around the world you have spread players and i actually put a slash here that's not necessary in command blocks only when you use them in chat so basically spread players allows you to spread players so uh first what it wants you to do is give a center from which to spread so the center i just set the tilde tilde because this one doesn't need a y coordinate so just basically the position of the command block is the center then it uses a radius of 50 so we can also just once again tap complete this is c there and it won't tap complete any further we can see right here spread distance and the maximum range and then respect teams true or false so basically this is the spread distance so it will spread players at least 50 blocks from each other and maximum spread distance is 100 and it will respect teams so that if players are in the same team which teams is something that will come in the part about scoreboards 
it, they get teleported to the same place. Uh, next is stats. <laughs> Well, stats is one of the uh, those commands I can't really explain a simple form of, so it will have to come later in a separate video. Uh, next is slash world border command. So basically, the world border command allows to set a border around the world. So first you need to set a center, which you do by doing world border center, and then the coordinates of your center. So I set the center to, let's look for it, I think it's a little more... I think it's right over here in it's right over here so this is my center and then I can press this to, so this is world border set 10 so 10 is the radius around the center that the world border will be so if I set the radius to 10 it's really small I can't get out and let's just set this to a lot so that I don't be, so that I'm not bothered by it probably a big a too big number 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 the number is too big, it won't work. So next we're gonna use the test for block command. Um, test for block is basically just gonna test for a block. So it's gonna test if there's a stone block on top of this command block. Now you might think this is not stone, but this is a form of stone. It's just a different type of stone. So when I do this, you can see the comparator turns on right there. Um, if I destroy this block and I test for it again, that comparator turns off because the block's not there, so it's negative. Next is test for blocks with an S because it tests for several blocks. So you're gonna need three sets of coordinates. First, uh, you're gonna need this corner. Let me just check. So you've got this corner, or probably not this corner, I guess. Uh, oh no, I tested for this one. So you've got this corner, and you've got this corner. And you need this corner. So you need the two corners of the blocks you want to compare. And then only one corner of the blocks you want to compare them to. So basically what this command is going to do is it's going to test if these two are the same. So comparators off and I run it. Comparator turns on because these two places are the same. But if I place this right here. And I test for it again. Comparator turns off because they are not the same. This is uh, pretty useful. I made a secret door with this once. A door lock mechanism. I'll link that video. Pretty cool. And next is tell roll. Tell roll is a pretty complicated command. I can't write it just off the top of my head. Because this is it. <laughs> uh, the best way to, to do it is basically just use a tell roll generator. I will... Link that also, put it on the screen or in the description at least, or whatever, and uh, you can just generate there by uh, filling in what you want. So the text, what basically does, it display displays a text in chat, which is this. And when you you can uh, set that when you hover over over it, it will display something. Sorry for the stuttering again. And basically, uh, when you click it, you can have something happen. So as you can see those cats weren't there before and I just summoned them by clicking on that text. So you can just put all these things in and this site will give you back a command to use. So it just makes it a lot easier for you. Uh, now the problem with Telro is that only uh, ops can use it. Only people with OP. But that was fixed later with the trigger command. So basically what trigger command does is, let me just set it to the right objective, is it allows you to, well basically to put the tell roll and, the, and just um, link it with a scoreboard objective. So that when something is clicked, it just adds to the scoreboard objective and lets unopt players use the tell roll. So we're just gonna use this command right here. Scoreboard players enable at a thingy. To just enable us to use Stingy, um, I can think of a better name to use Telvo. Um, so this just adds Stingy, but I already have it. So not gonna go into scoreboard right here because that will be another video. And then this is basically the Telvo command. So now it then allows us to basically use it. Um, might have been a bit of a bad explanation there if you didn't get it. That could happen, but yeah, basically it sets Stingy to 1 when I click this. 
So having Tingy to one basically gives me, uh, well, basically allows me to use this to summon all of the cats. So yeah, to sum this one up in case I wasn't clear. Basically, using this command, you enable people to use the command to use the um, to use the scoreboard objective, and then here, as you can see, it will. It's in the tower command here. It will set it to one whenever you execute it, allowing you to actually execute it even when you're not OP, when you're not in OP. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So if I go game mode zero here. It's not the same as on the server, but and I scroll up and click the cat thingy. As you can hear, I am summoning the cats. So, yeah, that works. And that was the end for this video. So that was it for the Ultimate Command Look Tutorial 3.0 Episode 1. Um, if you're not subscribed to me and you don't know me, I've got some pretty cool videos. I make all kinds of command block stuff and make tutorials for them and the next part is going to be server commands so if you run a server and you want to know all the commands for it got that covered and after that it's going to be a lot more so stick around and i'll see all you guys in the next video